Breaking news! A missing persons alert has gone out for 31-year-old Stephanie Fisher. Police say Stephanie taken by her new husband, Dennis Moe, a man who's had multiple domestic violence abuse claims against him. Those claims including beating, choking, and even putting a gun in Stephanie's mouth. Police say Moe is to be considered armed and dangerous. Stephanie believed to be in extreme danger. Straight to Ellie Justhead also on this story. Ellie, what more can you tell me about this guy? He's disappeared too. Right. Well, Nancy, I'm counting at least five alleged incidents involving these two alleged domestic violence that Dennis Moe is uh, claimed to have uh, perpetrated on the victim. Going all the way back to July, uh, as the other reporter explained, he's now facing this laundry list of charges, battery, strangling and suffocation, second degree reckless, endangering, intentionally fi uh, pointing a firearm at a person, he's looking at a, a, at least 20 years if he's convicted on all these counts. Dr. Bethany Marshall, psychoanalyst, author of Deal Breakers, what do you think? I am concerned about the escalating pattern of violence, but I'm also concerned that he may have kidnapped her or absconded with her in order to convince her to drop the charges. And women, if you are in a domestic violence abuse situation and you call 911 and the police tell you to press charges, press the charges do not let your husband or boyfriend convince you otherwise and if there's a tro respect the temporary restraining order because the biggest mistake that women make is they feel guilty they go back I, i'm not suspecting that that's the case in this particular situation but the husband tries to get them to drop the charges and that's you know could be a part of the picture in this in this situation with me dr marty mccary physician and professor I just have to add in here now, according to what I'm hearing, domestic violence was happening before she married him. I mean, that is something that really needs to be looked into here is why she married this man knowing fully he was abusing her prior to marriage. I mean, I do hope she is found okay, but please, people, if you're in a domestic violent relationship or relationship, don't marry the guy. Get out. Hans Hopkins, Dr. McCary, you know, I remember when I first became a felony prosecutor, and we don't deal with simple batteries or simple, simple assault. It's got to be bad by the time it gets to felony court. I remember a woman coming into court with a broken leg and a cast. Her hand was in some kind of a, not a cast, but something else. She's dragging her leg along behind her with the boyfriend, and she wanted to drop charges. You right? Yeah. You we, must see it all the time. We do see this sort of allegiance to the abuser, and s domestic violence is called a silent killer because women mm -hmm. are often silent about it. There is this sort of allegiance or feel the feeling of guilt that they don't want to turn on the person who sometimes can redeem them. We see these characteristic fractures, dislocations, burns, and lacerations where the mechanisms just don't make sense, and we know it's domestic violence. We're often limited in what we can do but this is a good example of a situation. Doctor, you're so right. Back to Detective Michael Hartwell with the West Bend Police Department. Detective, isn't it true that, in, in fact, on earlier occasions, police would come to the scene. After a 911 call from her, she would be horribly uh, beaten, and both she and the new husband would say she fell down the stairs. Come on. Yes, that is part of the reports that we've had, you know, conflicting information regarding how it, you know, what is told to us after we get up there and do an investigation. And in some cases, she's changed the story and then told us what truthfully happened, how she became battered. And we've seen this continuing escalation. To the lawyer, Susan Moss, Mickey Sherman, Daryl Cohen. Daryl, I don't know if you were prosecuting with me at that time. I think you were already a defense attorney. But when the lady dragged in with a broken leg, I said to the witness stand we did not drop the charges and he ended up pleading guilty daryl i mean but the problem is if your witness your victim won't testify you really don't have a case unless you can make it without the victim and how do you do that nancy you do it with photographs you do it with her outcry witnesses you do it and make her feel guilty if nothing else and you make her testify because if she's not saving herself 
perhaps she's saving another woman somewhere down the line, right. somewhere down the road. To Lori in New York. Hi, Lori, what's your question? Hi, Nancy. Nice to talk to you. Um, Likewise. First of all, I want to say you're twins are gorgeous, beautiful, and I'm glad your mother and Eleanor Odom are feeling very, very better, much Thank better. You. Thank you. I saw Eleanor today, took her another casserole. She's on the mend. Go ahead, dear. Really? Um, I do have a, a question. Um, this woman, now, do they do they have any idea where any of his relatives may be? Is that where Excellent they question. Where he is? To you, Detective Hartwell, where are his relatives? Uh, we're working on that time with, on that at this time with other law enforcement where we've had some contact with the son and we're doing some other follow-up with other relatives that are in the state at this time. To Christine, Illinois. Hi, dear. Oh, hi, Nancy. How are you? I'm good, dear. What's your question? Very good. I have a comment and a question. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a victim of extreme domestic abuse. And yes. I have to tell you why these women that have broken legs and are bad or bad, the reason why they don't say anything is they know that they will kill them. Yep. If they say anything, number one. And my second question is, if you have three domestic charges against you, the state can pick that up even if the uh the victim does not do that and he actually should have been in jail good question mickey sherman what about it you know the the problem is is that so often it's the wife who wants to or girlfriend who invites herself back and i'm not casting stones at her it's an addictive personality and they, they just can't seem to draw themselves out of these horrendous relationships as dr marshall said and that's a real problem for the prosecution you've got to put them on the stand in spite of themselves and then bring in an expert and i've seen it done saying she's lying to you because of this that and the other thing and you need a psychologist to get up there and say that everyone we are switching gears and still taking your calls i want to tell you about a